they, they're going to find you, whether it be tomorrow, next week, next year, or 10 years from now. Sometimes when young people go off to college for the first time, they might get into trouble. Do you know what to do if that happens? Well, we're going to find out right now because that's what we're going to ask the lawyer. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. And my guest is uh, Pittsburgh attorney Frank Walker. Frank, thank you for making some time to join us today. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I want to remind everybody, if you have questions about your specific situation that you'd like to ask a lawyer, make sure to go to askthelawyers.com. Click the button at the top of the screen that says Ask a Lawyer, and you can do that right there. But right now, I'm going to ask some questions. Frank, so let's, uh, let's just start about uh, college students. Maybe they get in trouble, bad things happen. Is this something you've had some experience with in your, in your practice? Yes, definitely my practice. I mean, it, it's... It's different because college kids, is, sometimes it's the first time going off to college. They're 17, 18 years old. They're, they're officially an adult. Mm. They get to college campus, and that first week, which we call the syllabus week, you go to class, maybe. You get the syllabus, and then you go out and party for the week knowing you're freshman, classmates, your upperclassmen, and you learn the campus a little bit. Well, what students don't understand is that their permanent address is probably still with their home back home right. where they came from. So they get in trouble to get a citation. Some upperclassman speaks in there and says, don't worry about that. Go to go to, go to to court, pay the fine. It's not a big deal. Your parents will never find out. Hmm. Well, your parents do find out because the citation and the paperwork is getting sent back home to your permanent address. Your parents are calling you. Now they spent all this money to get you to go to campus, get you to go to college on that campus. And they're thinking, well, is, degree, is, is the degree going to be worth anything if you have a criminal record? Well, I need to find someone to help you out and make sure that record remains clean. So let me call an attorney who's experienced in that area. And a lot of times that call comes to my office. So I, I, as a parent, my first question would be, because I'm sure some parents think, oh, I've got a buddy or I know somebody who knows somebody here in my hometown. But uh, it probably is a better idea to contact an attorney where the, where the uh, citation happened, right? Yes, you definitely want someone who's on the ground in that area near that campus, who knows the players, knows the officers, the courts, the prosecutor, knows everything about the system and how it works because there are some collateral consequences that come along with the citation. Sometimes you may lose your license, you may have a hold on your account with the student account, and you may have to see the student conduct board, which mm. you want someone who's local in that area who understands all that's involved in that citation. Let's talk about DUIs, DWIs. Um, uh, what? Let's just talk from the beginning. What is your advice? Say, say a student, a college student, they're away from home, they get a DUI uh, while they're at college. What's your advice? What should they do? Make sure you save your paperwork. Contact your parents. Contact the lawyer. Stay offline. A lot of times students think they're smarter than everyone else because, let's face it, they're in college. So at that, at that point, everyone knows 18, 19-year-old. You know everything. There's mm -hmm. no need. You're invincible. So you go online, you, you, you research the laws, you understand, oh, I can go to court and represent myself. It's a disaster. It is an absolute disaster. You need someone who's experienced, who knows what the penalties are, what you're facing, and how it can impact your license down the road. You may get past the criminal part of it, but now you have, you've lost your license, or you have an interlock device, or you have to do some safety classes that you didn't know about, and now you can't graduate or you can't renew your license in your home state because you have a hold in this state because you got a DUI there. So make sure you keep all your paperwork, remain silent, don't go calling the police officer, don't call the court, don't ask any questions of the clerk, contact your parents if you're not able to find an attorney, or just try to find an attorney who's experienced in DUI. You don't want someone who's doing, again, real estate law or contract law right. to represent you in a DUI case. You wanna make sure they're experienced in your area, in your area. What if they're taken to jail? What if they're arrested? Uh, does that change things? It does and it doesn't. If, if, if you go to jail, you still want to make sure you maintain your paperwork. The rules are still the same. Don't talk to anyone. Don't show anyone your paperwork. Now, instead of talking to your classmates on campus, you're talking to the classmates of your cellmates in the cell beside you. Both bad ideas. I mean, it didn't work. The advice that they're giving you didn't work for them because they're in the cell right beside you. So you want to make sure you remain silent. Find an attorney. Keep your paperwork once you get out of jail. Take your information to that attorney and make sure you're very truthful with them because the privilege exists, attorney-client privilege exists between you and the attorney. Make sure you tell them everything so they know how to best help you. What about social media? Is that something they need to be careful about? Oh, man, social media. <laughs> it, it's, it's a blessing and a curse because you, you get a lot of information at once. 
but then you can put out a lot of information at once. And sometimes that information is not helpful. Mm. For example, let's say you are at a party and you do something crazy. And of course you're live streaming it because you want everyone to know you're at this party. And then something happens later on and the cops start asking, well, who was where, and who was at this party? And you've seen something or you've done something. You're not supposed to be there because you're not 18. You're not supposed to be drinking because you're not 21, but you're on video drinking and at the party. So you're in trouble. Mm. So, but of course you put it on social media. So now officers, all they have to do is log on, look at your profile, print off the pictures, show up at your door. Is this you? You got a problem. So just stay off social media. I mean, keep it, keep social media social with other people. Don't put any legal stuff on there. Right. Definitely don't put any legal, illegal stuff on social media. What are some of the other uh, areas that, uh, in your experience, you've seen college students, uh, areas they might get in trouble in that they might need to help from someone like yourself? I call it college crimes, like small stuff. It's just, for lack of a better phrase, stupid stuff. Fake ID, underage drinking, public consumption, mm -hmm. public urination, just disorderly conduct, making unreasonable noises, going to parties, giving someone the keys and, and helping them Make an understanding that they are drunk, knowing they are drunk, and aiding them in drunk driving, reckless driving, hit and run, just making poor decisions because you're impatient and you want to grow up too fast or you want to do something that you're not supposed to do and you just don't have the, the willingness to say no. Peer pressure, impatient, and just being in a place where you just don't really need to be at that time. So a lot of times it's just, just lack of judgment. You're just not making the best decisions at that time, which is understandable. Sure. The job of the attorney is to make sure it doesn't harm you full time. It doesn't harm you for the rest of your life. And that kind of leads me to the next question. You mentioned that uh, they may think, oh, I can hide this from my parents. And, and maybe it doesn't get sent to the, their permanent address at home. Maybe somehow that they don't get that. Is, is it even possible to hide it from their parents? And then is that a, is that a good idea? It's possible to hide it from your parents, but it's not a good idea. Because four years, four or five years, whenever you graduate, now you're applying for jobs, you're applying for graduate school, you're applying for different licenses, and that you may need help from your parents at that time. You're more mature. You may need your, your parents to co-sign for something. And they're wondering why you can't get a loan or why you can't get into graduate school or why you don't qualify for any financial aid at this in, in medical school or law school. Well, well, you had this felony on your record or just misdemeanor on your record that prevents you from doing a lot of things. Or why you can't get into the armed forces or any any of the licensing school, or you can't get a series seven, anything that involves a license, your criminal record matters. Hmm. Now all of a sudden your parents are asking questions that you now have to backtrack and tell them about it, number one. Number two, under, explain to them why you didn't tell them about it in the very beginning. So yes, it's possible to hide it from them, but it's not a good idea. Uh, it seems to me uh, as a parent of, of four children, three of them who have been who are college age, uh, a couple of things. Uh, they may not get that letter from the from the sheriff's department or whomever, but when their uh, car insurance all of a sudden shoots up or something like that, they're gonna notice that. Absolutely. And, and then Absolutely. the other thing is a lot of the kids in, at that age seem to think, eh, ignore it and it'll go away. Ah, just, I won't answer the letters. Uh, 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 but the government's not gonna leave them alone. They're not gonna give up on this, is that right? Correct. The government's not going anywhere. They're going to find you, whether it be tomorrow, next week, next year or 10 years from now. They're, they're going to find you and it's not going to go away. So stop listening to your friends, address it head on, find an attorney who understands what's going on, show them your paperwork and let them help you. Be willing to be be willing to listen and, and be coachable because the attorney is going to tell you what you need to do. Sometimes it's take a class. Sometimes it's community service, AA meetings, NA meetings, something to show that you're taking this you're taking this really, you're taking the responsible route and you're taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what attorneys want to help you understand that judges want to see. What if they are facing, say, uh, school suspension or something like that? Is that uh, an area that the, an attorney can help them with? Yes. A lot of times students think, oh, this isn't a court. There's no police officer here. I can go in and tell the student conduct anything and they'll give me the benefit of the doubt. Well, a lot of these schools receive federal funds mm -hmm. and it's because they are putting themselves out there as being a safe school. And a lot of times you have to, the school has to report what their crimes are. So they have to report that someone got arrested or there's, there's the crime rate is certain percentage. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden they may not qualify for certain things. So they have to be real strict on some of the crimes that happen on their campus or with their students. For example, if someone's just dealing weed in, in the dorms, that's a problem. 
It may not be a big deal in the court system because it's the first defense and face it sooner or later, they're going to legalize it somewhere. Right. But you may think, oh, selling a couple grams here, it's not that big of a deal. I make some money. I get a slap on the wrist in the criminal system. Well, the school may not like that. And they may suspend you and expel you. Now, all of a sudden, you have to explain to your parents why you had to sit out a year because you wanted to sell a little bit of weed in the dorm because you didn't think it's that big of a deal. It's a huge deal. When you see the student conduct board, you need to have a lawyer who understands what's going on. Wow. Lots of great information, Frank. And uh, I sure appreciate you taking some time to answer our questions. Anytime. I appreciate you having me. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been Pittsburgh attorney Frank Walker. Remember, if you have a question about your specific situation, just go to askthelawyers.com. Click on the button at the top of the home screen that says Ask a Lawyer, and you can do your asking right there. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Rosenthal for Ask the Lawyers.